During the Vietnam War, the US military funded research into radio-controlled monkeys, while in the 2000s, scientists from Singapore have developed ways of controlling the flight of giant beetles. Scientists developing methods of remotely controlling live animals is nothing new. Warning, this is a review of scientific studies that have happened in the past. It is not an endorsement of these kinds of experiments, simply a review. Let's start with this declassified footage from 1968. The Department of Defense was interested in controlling the movements of Reese's monkeys. We have a nice little vest that the monkey would wear with two electrodes on either side. This is a radio receiver backpack that could receive signals from this transmitter. A technician would use that remote control to send signals that would stimulate the electrodes on either side of the monkey's vest. They would use Reese's monkeys that were specifically trained to be able to interpret those signals and move left or right towards a specific target. Why did they do this? This biotechnology application provides the Air Force with an additional capability to penetrate hostile areas not accessible to man. There's one major problem here. The monkeys require specific training in order to interpret those electric signals. What if instead there was a way to directly control an animal's brain? Spoiler alert, there is a way to do that. But first I should tell you that this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. What is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. If you use a VPN and connect to the internet, all of your information is in a sense blurred out. So anyone trying to access it, determine what you're doing and where you are, can't see it. Here's my question though, how do you use a VPN? I thought it was kind of like another web browser on your phone that you would use to search the internet. It turns out, I was wrong. To use Surfshark VPN, all you have to do is click the app and press connect. A couple weeks ago, I was traveling in an airport and I had work to do on my computer. When I tried to access the Wi-Fi, it looked something like this. Which is the right Wi-Fi? Could any of these connections be dangerous? I was so concerned I didn't log onto any and I didn't get any work done. If I had Surfshark VPN at the time, I could have logged onto any public Wi-Fi and be confident that my information was protected. It also has a system within it where it'll let you know if any of your information or passwords has been leaked anywhere else on the internet, which is really helpful. You could scan this QR code on screen, you can click the link in the description, and you could use my promo code to receive an 83% discount and three extra months free. Surfshark VPN. Back to that question though. What if instead there was a way to directly control an animal's brain? Here's a study where scientists wanted to do just that with rats. Here we have a receiver that's directly connected into the brain of the rat. Specifically, it can stimulate three parts of that rat's brain. The part of their brain that receives signals from their right whiskers, left whiskers, and then a reward center in their brain. If the rat were to perceive that their right whiskers were stimulated, they might imagine that there's an obstacle over there or something in the way causing them to move left. If then the rat did move left, then the scientists would stimulate the reward center of that rat's brain, encouraging the rat to follow the directions of that, that fake whisker stimulation. They were able to use this remote control system to encourage the rat to weave through a bunch of obstacles, climb up a ladder, crawl across a plank, down a set of stairs, through a tunnel, and then across a large board. What is the point though? Here's a study where I think the purpose of it is a lot more clear. In this study, scientists were trying to remotely control the minds of animals for search and rescue purposes. They decided to control the minds of cockroaches. They performed very specific surgery on these cockroaches, implanting electrodes within them to stimulate their body movement. During their test, they wanted to see if they could remotely control a cockroach to follow this this wavy line. Here are the results. In this test, they went a step further and connected the entire thing to an Xbox Connect to see if the isolated computer system could independently guide cockroaches through a maze. Here are the results. It worked. And in this study, they're able to successfully control the flight of large beetles via a Wiimote. Now imagine if you could release these remotely controlled insects into areas that humans cannot access. Then maybe they find a missing person or somebody who is trapped and then release a signal back to some receiver that has the exact location of where that person is. There's one big problem with this. These cyborg cockroaches and giant beetles will eventually run out of power, right? Well, in this study, they 
they just slapped a solar cell onto the back of that Madagascar hissing cockroach, so that's really not a problem anymore. Why don't we just develop robots that can do these things? Why do we have to remote control live animals. Well, developing robots that can mimic the movements of live animals is extremely costly and time consuming. Just recently, this engineer from Stanford was celebrated because he made a robot that had bird feet and can land in difficult places kind of clumsily. Well, what if we can just control the brains of birds? Oh wait, we already did that. Here's a study from 2002 where they control the brains of pigeons. Issue, everything so far has been very invasive. Is there a way to do this without performing brain surgery on an animal? Well, in this study, they wanted to figure out how to do just that with turtles. Now, how would you non-invasively control the movements of a turtle? Here's their solution. It's kind of this small wall or plank that's connected to a device mounted to the top of the turtle's shell. That device could pivot this wall around the front of a turtle. If the wall was rotated to block their right side, then the turtle would go to the left. If it was rotated to block the other side, it would, it would go to the right. Here are the results. Here's the turtle. As the device pivots to block their left side or left field of view, they go to the right. Then it spins around and blocks the right side they eventually go left. This is still a little invasive. We're mounting something kind of cumbersome onto the turtle's shell. Is there any way that we could control an animal's mind using just our minds? In this study, they planted a volunteer in front of a screen that had a flashing circle on it. They placed electrodes on that volunteer's head that were connected to a computer. The computer was also connected to an ultrasound system that was specifically set up to excite parts of a rat's brain that were in charge of moving its tail. Nothing was inside the volunteer's brain. Nothing was planted inside the rat's brain. Everything was external. When a volunteer looked at that screen, it created a signal in its brain that was transmitted to the computer, then from the computer to that mouse's brain, encouraging it to twitch its tail. But did it work? The volunteer's thought caused the rat's tail to twitch 94% of the time successfully linking the brains of two different species.